All right, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to follow up and show you some of the things I've been doing with creating my own GPTs. Now, if you've not heard about this already, what ChatGPT now allows you to do is to create these individual GPTs, which are essentially creating custom instructions and using background information and resources to maintain or to create this GPT to exist on its own up here separate from the others. Now, a lot of people have said this already, that this is not groundbreaking considering what we've already had access to, but I'll tell you what, it makes it infinitely easier to organize all of your information inside of ChatGPT and improves your workflow. The second thing that's important about this is the increased token ability. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, I talk about why I had switched over to Claude 2 because we have up to 100,000 versus the previous amount that we had through ChatGPT, which was roughly in the neighborhood of a little over 4,000, which was inadequate. So now we've got this stuff available in ChatGPT. I've kind of moved things back over to see how it goes in the Turbo model. And uh, so let's talk a little bit more about the value of this. Over here, we always are used to having our conversations going on over here, but now we have these GPTs that essentially function as folders. That's probably the best way to put it. So if we explore, we click on this button over here. You do have to have the paid account, by the way, the pro. This is what you're gonna see. We see the GPTs, of course, over here, we have ones that are already created by OpenAI that gives us some access to some cool stuff, like for example, creating a creative writing coach, coloring book hero, and these are very cool to tinker around with. But in this one, I'm gonna show you how basically to create your own. So I've done a few extra. Now, the question is, why would you create one of these GPTs? Well, let me give you a couple of use cases. Number one, I don't wanna to have to constantly be changing my custom instructions or inputs every time I wanna switch gears for something. So obviously you would have to go down in here into your profile and put in custom instructions. That's boring and then I have to do a lot of copy and pasting. So when you create a GPT, you could have that stuff in there. It will just purely exist in there with resource documents and I don't have to keep going back and forth with it. All I have to do is click on this. So there are a lot of smart uses for this. There's a couple of that I've already created. One of the ones I wanna show you here is a book writing GPT. Now, when you create a GPT, I'm gonna go ahead and click on this so you can see how it works. We can use the GPT builder, which is very intuitive, and you can just basically build this thing just by having a conversation with ChatGPT, basically. And it will walk you through the steps. Now, that's great. I, I highly encourage you to do this right away because it's easy to do but also you can add configurations. Now, by the way, you could do both. You can start with the conversation component of it and you can always add configurations later. But inside of configurations, there's a couple of key features you need to notice. You can name it, you can add your description, blah, blah, blah. And these instructions can help differentiate your GPT from what we normally see in ChatGPT. We can ask it to do certain things like, for example, limit the outputs, only ask so many questions at a time, and you're going to see why this is valuable. We can add the tone. We can add all sorts of things in here. Conversation starters, these are just rapid ways that we could stick these things up here at the top that would kind of kickstart a conversation. Don't have to use those. And, of course, we have the capabilities. One of the most important things to do here, outside of the instructions, is to upload your knowledge files. Now, the knowledge files are really about what you're using for GPT to look into as a resource file in order to create the outputs that you're looking for. I have talked about this previously with Claude 2 and why this is so important for certain functions, especially when you're trying to create unique content. But let's say, for example, I'm drafting this new GPT for how to write a book. What do we really need when it comes to writing a book? What we really want is a coach and we want a step-by-step -step process for writing a book. Imagine somebody sitting there with you, prompting you every step of the way to write a high quality book. Wouldn't that be amazing? You'd want somebody just literally taking you through step-by-step -step and the answers that you give them will help it direct the next steps, the questions, and so forth. That's what we wanna create. So what we need to have in the knowledge base here is that step-by-step -step format. So one of the things that we can do is we can upload a document that includes that, okay? I happen to have one. A number of years ago, I picked up a PDF that was widely available called the Scribe Method. 
and the scribe method is about 471 pages. Now, I just want you to think about how much content that is. Now, previously, this was just not possible with ChatGPT. You can't upload this much. This is a lot of content, a huge resource document that is essentially step-by-step -step on how to create a successful book. What I did is I took that ebook and I uploaded it into the knowledge base. So now I will ask my chat, my GPT to interact with me based upon this resource document and to take me step by step through that process. Okay. That is how I developed my book writing GPT. So if I edit this and I'll show you what I have, I'm going to go back over here. I called it my book writing GPT. And you look at the instructions here. And of course, it's going to change over time, depending on what I find with my outputs. I'm going to say you're an expert at coaching the creation of books, including design, layout, and content. You coach people step by step through the process of prompting with questions, offering feedback, and optimizing the content for successful creation and marketing of a book. Okay. You have a friendly and approachable tone, which is just what I put in here, but you could always change that but keep people on track to finally getting that book written. So I want to have a little bit of aggressiveness there, right? Push, go to the next step, get it done. The last thing is you coach step by step. So only ask one to two questions at a time and use the feedback to take someone to the next step by step, then the next step on the process. Now I added this, and this is the cool part of going back and configuring this because every time I would go through a step, the GPT would simply ask me like 10 questions in a row. It was really overwhelming and I hated that. So I went back and say, only ask me one to two questions at a time. And that way I can give you the answers and then it will go on to the next step. So the conversational starter, very simply, I said, if you want to start from scratch, I want to write a book, help me step by step. And it will use that. You could see here in the knowledge base, I uploaded my document and I gave it all the capabilities possible. And that was it. Now, when you actually start having this conversation, okay, this is what's going to happen. So let's go back over here and we can just go ahead and click on book writing GPT. Okay. And now I could just click on this prompt and watch what happens. I want to write a book. Okay. Help me step by step. So it's just going to start this process and say, that's fantastic. Writing a book, excellent journey, exciting journey, yada, yada. Now we're going to conceptualize a book. What is the main idea of the theme of the book? And then it asks me a question number two, who do you envision reading your book? That's it. Okay. Could you share these two points? Once we have a clear idea on a target audience, we can move on to outlining and structuring your content. That is it. So now I can answer those questions and then we can go back and forth. Now, the other beautiful part out of this is look down here. We have a little file. We can add additional things in here. So we could just keep going on this process and this can keep going. If I want to change gears and do something else, I don't have to go back through and add more of those custom prompts, et cetera. I can just keep going with my process. So this is extremely exciting in terms of just having this stuff organized right over here. There's a couple other things that I did. I picked up a few others. One of them was, for example, I found this from some guy on Twitter. I forgot what his name is. Viral hooks generator. Muhab and Hassan Asgar, I hope I said that properly, but he created a GPT that helps you create viral hooks for social media. And you could see here it has a couple of things, a couple of custom conversational starters there. Interesting. You don't get to see what goes into it. You can only new chat about hide from the sidebar, copy link, et cetera. So there is a way to hide your resource documents if you want to share these publicly. So that does make it kind of hidden and it's not taking people's documents and sharing them all over the place. But I guarantee somewhere on your desktop, you have valuable PDFs and content and resources, transcripts, et cetera, that you can bundle together as resources and create one of these awesome little GPTs for yourself. I have another one in here for SEO. And we talked about this a few times in comments on my channel that it's hard to get a complete workflow from A to Z. We're going to see if I can get the whole book done. I think that'll be interesting, but I might have to break it up into sections. So you might have to have, for example, the title generating GPT, the content generating GPT. You know, there might be multiple steps that need to be done in order to make the process more fluid 
I am interested to see if I can just get one GPT to go from A to Z because that's a pretty big project. But I do suggest on some of these like SEO, big chunk, probably going to have to have separate GPTs to specialize and be trained on in individual functions. Okay, but we'll have to see how that goes. But right now, just think about this as a way to organize your information, the resources that you have on your computer and available to you, and organize these into these various bots here that can actually get to work for you and make your life streamlined, make it a heck of a lot easier. And then, of course, later on, we're going to be looking into how do you hook this up to zaps and so forth to do functions that are automated for you. But right now, this is very cool. And just start creating these. I asked a couple of questions. I said, how many of these GPTs have you created already? Some people have said, I've only created one to five. Some people have created dozens at this point. But people are having a lot of fun with this. And as long as that ends with improving your productivity, you're on the right track. And feel free to share any of yours in the comments below. If you like this video, you want to get access to some of these GPTs, then subscribe to the channel. Give me a thumbs up like the video and so forth. And of course, make sure you look out for new videos, comment down below what you want to see. Thanks so much for watching and get to work.